In this tutorial, we're going to cover how to set up the Sony RX02 camera system to be used with Thea 3D. The first step in this process is setting up the RX02 cameras. Each camera ships in a box like this, and when you open the box, the first thing you'll find is some documentation. It is highly recommended that you read through this documentation as well as the documentation posted on the Sony website to familiarize yourself with the cameras. Further into the box, you'll find the RX02 camera itself, the removable and rechargeable battery pack, the memory card protector, an AC adapter, a micro USB cable, and a wrist strap. In our setup, we will only be using the camera, the battery pack, and the memory card protector, as well as a class 10 or higher micro SD card. To set up the camera, the first thing we need to do is insert the battery. To do that, we open the cover on the side of the camera and insert the battery, making sure that the arrow on the end of the battery is aligned with the arrow in the etching next to the battery slot. With the battery inserted, close the battery cover, and we can open the cover on the back of the camera that hides the memory card slot the audio in port, the micro USB port, and the mini HDMI port. We'll actually completely detach that cover. And with that detached, we can insert the micro SD card into the memory card slot. And then attach the memory card protector where that cover used to be. And with both the memory card and the battery installed, can then turn on the camera. And because this is the first time the camera has been turned on, we need to select the language as English, as well as the time zone, and then set the date and time. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to leave that as January 1st at midnight can then accept those settings, hit OK. And now we'll go into the main menu to set some of the settings uh, that are required to use this camera as part of a multi-camera system. The first setting we need to change is the shoot mode. We want to set that to movie program auto. Hit OK. And then we'll go back into the menu and turn off audio capture. Navigate through the menu until you see the audio recording setting. We'll set that to off. And next we're going to turn the power off temperature to high. And that will allow for longer continuous recording with the camera. So that is in setup one, down to auto power off temp, Set that to high, accept the warning. Next, we're going to set the time code settings. So in TCUB settings, we need to set the TC format to NDF for no drop frames and TC run to free run. And this is required for the camera to be time synced with other cameras in the system. Back to the main menu and then we'll set the USB connection to PC remote to allow this camera to be controlled remotely. With all of those settings um, set, you can turn the camera off and repeat this process for each of the cameras in your system. With the camera set up, the next step is to set up the camera control boxes. Each control box is shipped in a box like this. 
and when you open the box the first thing you'll find is some documentation again it is highly recommended that you read through this documentation as well as the documentation posted on the Sony website to familiarize yourself with the control boxes. Further into the box, you'll find the camera control box itself, the cable protector, a short multi-terminal connecting cable, a long multi-terminal connecting cable, an AC adapter, and a micro USB cable. The only components we're going to use in our setup are the control box, the cable protector, and the short multi-terminal connecting cable, as well as a gigabit PoE splitter. To set up the control box, we first pass the thick end of the multi-terminal connecting cable and both branches from the PoE splitter through the cable protector. Next, we remove the back plate from the control box and connect the multi-terminal cable to the multi-port of the control box. The micro USB branch from the PoE splitter to the DC in port of the control box. And the ethernet branch from the PoE splitter to the data port of the control box. Then we secure the cable protector to the control box using the attached thumb screws. And then we can pass the cables through the slot on the side of the cable protector and secure the cap. Finally, make sure that the master client switch on the control box is set to client and the on off switch is set to off. And with that, the control box is set up and you can repeat this process for all of the other control boxes in your system. Now that the cameras and control boxes are set up, we're going to connect our system using a PoE network switch. This switch is connected to a dedicated network card in our computer using this blue ethernet cable and is connected to the camera that's being used to record this tutorial using the white ethernet cable. To connect each control box and camera pair, first thread one end of a quarter inch male to male thumb screw into the top of the control box and then attach the camera to the other end of that thumb screw. When the control box and camera are connected, you can then plug the free end of the multi-terminal connecting cable that is attached to the control box into the micro USB port of the camera. And then plug one end of a CAT6 ethernet cable into the PoE splitter that is connected to the control box. And this will enable data transfer and power both the control box and the camera. And plug the other end of that cable into the network switch. You then repeat that for all of your camera and control box pairs. And when all of them are connected, you will set one of the control boxes client master switch to master while leaving the others set to client and then turn all of the control boxes on. And with that, your system is set up. Once the camera system is set up, its control interface can be accessed through a supported web browser, such as Google Chrome, 
on the computer connected to the network switch. To access the control interface, navigate to 169.254.200.200. The control interface is divided into two primary areas. On the left is the camera information area, where there is one panel for each of the connected camera control box pairs in the system. On the right is the control area, where under the camera tab, we have access to camera settings and control over the cameras. And under the box tab, we have access to settings for the camera control boxes. The first thing we're going to do is update the firmware of the control boxes connected to the cameras. So we can see that three out of the four cameras are connected to control boxes with firmware version 2.0.0 and one of the cameras is connected to a control box with firmware version 1.0.0. So we're going to download a firmware update from the Sony website. So we can see here the latest firmware version is 2.0.0. So we're going to select that and download the file. and just wait for that zip file containing the firmware update to finish downloading. Now that the firmware file has finished downloading, we're going to open the box tab of the control area and select update firmware. This notice is just telling us that this will update the firmware on all of the control boxes. So we'll hit OK. Select the firmware file we just downloaded, which is a zip file, and hit Open. Now we'll just wait as the firmware update is applied to all of the control boxes in our system. So we can see that three of the control boxes are giving us an update warning and that is simply because they were already at the latest firmware version 2.0.0 so that warning is okay and we could ignore it and now the out-of-date firmware is being updated on the fourth control box so we'll just wait for that to finish being applied so now we can see that the firmware update was successfully applied to the fourth control box. So we can hit OK and this will restart all of the control boxes. Okay, and now we can see that all four of the control boxes have been successfully restarted. We're now going to turn on all of the cameras connected to those control boxes. So to do this, we're going to select all of the cameras or all of the control boxes. And under the camera tab of the control area, we're just going to turn the power on to those cameras. Now we can see that all four of the cameras have been turned on and in this case the four cameras are just sitting on my desk so they're not recording anything very interesting. What we will do now is link the date and time of all four cameras. So again with all cameras selected under the camera tab of the control area next to date time we'll just hit link this will match the date and time of all the cameras in the system to the date and time on my computer. Once that is done, we're going to initialize the control boxes under the box tab of the control area simply by hitting initialize with all four of the cameras selected.
Once the control boxes have initialized, the setup of the Sony RX02 camera system is complete. Please refer to the data collection tutorial for instructions on how to collect data using the system.